Hi there, this is Ryan Erlacher with LawAbidingBiker.com. I want to welcome you back. Thank you for uh, checking this video out. It's going to be a tutorial video. Um, if you have not checked out LawAbidingBiker.com, please do so. We do everything related to the Law Abiding Biker. Um, that includes, uh, we do a podcast, um, we do blogs, uh, we do video reviews, um, video, uh, I guess, reviews and instructional videos. Um, basically anything that has to do with law-abiding bikers. Um, we do maintenance on motorcycles. Of course, you see I have a AR-15 in my hand, which is what we're going to deal with today. Uh, but just understand uh, we're very diverse in anything that's remotely close to the law-abiding biker, we're going to cover it. So, um, if you haven't checked those other things out, please do. Uh, we also go into depth on a lot of things on our podcasts um, after we release a video. So, with that said, um, this is uh, obviously an AR-15 Mini Law Abiding Bikers. Um, respect our Second Amendment rights and want to exercise those rights. So um, I am uh, LE, um, law enforcement, so um, you don't have to be law enforcement to be a law abiding biker. Uh, like we say, 99% of the bikers are law abiding. There's a very small few that aren't. Um, and a lot of those law abiding bikers, too, appreciate their Second Amendment rights and either carry uh, pistols or have AR-15s or other type rifles. Today, there's a lot of videos I was looking out there on YouTube and uh, I did some research. There are not, to, to me, there's not a lot of good videos on how to clean an AR-15. There's a lot of people making a lot of stuff up, but I'm here to show you step by step without skipping any steps. We're going to go over nomenclature, um, both outside and internally while I'm uh, cleaning the rifle and showing you the proper way. I do hold certifications, um, I won't get into that, um, but I will tell you how Colt wants you to clean this and how uh, Ellie's around here clean these. Um, and the way they should be cleaned properly and like I say step by step without skipping any steps. So I want uh, all our videos are for uh, beginner, the first, maybe a person's watching this that just purchased an AR-15 and just got done shooting it, or before they shoot it, want to learn how to clean it. Uh, this is for the novice and also I think a lot of experienced AR-15 um, users uh, will get uh, get something out of this video because maybe a lot of years they've been cleaning it wrong or they don't quite know how. Um, this rifle here has had about 1,200 rounds fired through it uh, over the course of a week last week and then I've let it sit four days. Um, so it is going to be very dirty and it is in need of a cleaning. It's not difficult, don't make it difficult. Hopefully this video will show you what actually needs to be done and what doesn't need to be done. So with that, let's get started with a little bit of nomenclature. Um, be real careful about what type of uh, AR you buy. There's a lot of brands out there, there's a lot of junk. Um, this is a Colt. I highly suggest you get a Colt. Um, and I'll, and I'll tell you why um, in a minute, I'll, uh, well, we'll get to that in a second. Um, there is a lot of junk out there and a lot of companies basically they're reverse engineering trying to figure out how to make this gun and they're not making it properly and we're, they're seeing problems with them. If you're just a novice shooter and shoot once every two years, you'll probably be okay, but when you put rounds and rounds and rounds and thousands and thousands of rounds, uh, that's when you want to have a Colt. So, with that, we're going to do just a little bit of nomenclature real quick, if you're not familiar. We'll start with this side of the gun. Um, this is the buttstock, okay? This is the toe and the heel. This tube here is your receiver extension tube. Right here, as you can see, we have the charging handle, okay? Here, forward assist button, obviously rear sight. This piece of metal that protrudes is a brass deflector. Of course, you have your ejection port, and you have an ejection cover and or dust cover. Pistol grip, trigger guard, trigger, magazine well, hand guard. This all around here is the hand guard. Uh, if I didn't say it, of course, rear sight, I do have optics on this, an EOTech 512. Um, then we go up here to front uh, sight post, barrel, if you can't see I'm not exactly sure, front sight post, 
uh, barrel compensator and I'm not going to go to, through every little thing. Um, back here you have a here you have a pin. This is your pivot pin. This is your pin back here, which I'll show you a close up in a little bit. Is your takedown pin? Okay, that will be taking it down to uh, um, to break the rifle down. Okay, let's go to this side of the rifle. Okay, and over here um, we have our. Uh, I just want to make sure I didn't miss anything over here. Oh, I did. I missed one thing. Um, your uh, button right there, which is your magazine catch or magazine release. Okay? So, let's move to the other side. Alright. And over here, this button here is uh, your uh, bolt catch. Okay? This is your selector lever. Okay? And I want to see if, we, if there's anything else on this side. Okay, I think that gives you a basic, of course there's a lot of little parts that I didn't tell you about, but those are the main things uh, that you need to know on the outside of your rifle. Um, so with that, let's get right in to uh, cleaning this thing. First thing you want to do, obviously for safety, I have the uh, bolt locked back. I have the ejection cover open. I can visually see that there is no ammo in there. I can feel in there. There's no ammo in the chamber. Okay, safety first obviously, a lot of people hurt themselves or shoot people while cleaning their guns, it's, that's a known fact, so um, just make sure there's no ammo around, I don't have any ammo on the workbench where I'm going to be working, and I'm looking in there and I can clearly see that there's no ammo in there. Before you do that, um, you can always take, and this is what I suggest, and just rack the gun three times, okay, and then lock the bolt to the rear using the bolt catch. Okay, that way if there is anything in there, it's going to eject it out. Um, and then do your visual inspection. Visually inspect it. I reach up in there. There's nothing. Okay, I'm 100% comfortable that this weapon is not loaded. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and we're going to just send the bolt forward. Okay, we're going to need that bolt forward to uh, break this weapon down, and then you'll want to put it on fire and obviously point the weapon or in a clearing barrel I'm in a safe location I know it's not loaded and I'll drop that hammer okay so this weapon now is ready to break down and clean so let's get to that oh I do want to tell you one thing uh, why to buy a Colt um, understand not all AR-15 slash M16 type rifles are the same only Colt and FN have made M16 rifles and M4 carbines good enough for the U.S. military. There is a perfectly good reason for this. The U.S. government owns the Technical Data Package, TDP, and blueprints and required specifications of the M16 and M4 rifles and has only allowed Colt and FN access to them. All other manufacturers can only try to reverse engineer these firearms or redesign them as they see fit. The quality of the materials used is up to these individual manufacturers, but is mandated to Colt and FN by the technical data package. Some materials they use cannot even be obtained um, by other manufacturers, like barrel steel. These uh, the steel used by Colt and FN is a special government blend that is close to a standard chromoly 4150 steel that is used by some manufacturers, while others use a lesser CM4140. There is a reason why there is such a price difference in the AR market, and quality uh, is that reason. Okay, first things first, um, we're going to break this down, and on the rear here is your takedown pin. And on the left side of the rifle, you can just push on that pin a little bit. And then it gives you uh, here, and you can usually just get your finger or fingernail under it, and you can pull this pin the rest of the way out. I have a fancy block here that are very nice that's clamped into the vise, and it holds my rifle for me. So if you get one of those cool, you do not. I did it for years without one. It just makes it nicer for cleaning the barrel. But I'm going to go ahead and pull that pin out. All right, and it stops there. And... The upper receiver separates from the lower receiver somewhat on the pivot pin. 
Okay. And then we're just going to go ahead and remove the uh, charging handle and the bolt carrier assembly. So there's a little notch in here. You can't just pull your charging handle out. Once you get it out, you'll feel it stop. You got to just come down with it and then you can pull it straight out. So we've got our bolt carrier assembly, which is this, and charging handle out. We'll go to work on those. First thing we're going to do before we mess with the bolt carrier assembly and the charging handle is we're going to look inside the rifle here. It's the upper receiver. That is your chamber and your lugs down there. You can see. Um, just wanted to get some light in there. So the first thing we're going to do is get some uh, solvent on those to start breaking all the carbon down in there uh, and clean the barrel. So what you'll need for that is very simple. Is a uh, chamber brush. Most AR Colt especially comes with cleaning rods and the chamber brush. Uh, we'll just dip this uh, chamber brush in some solvent um, and I'm going to just use hops today. You can use whatever you want um, but I'm going to just get, use good old hops number nine and get it all over my brush and then uh, we'll get in there. Alright real quick first thing I've done is just uh, put a patch and some solvent and I'm just going to get that uh, chamber and those lugs get some solvent up in there I'm not actually going down the barrel um, yet. We'll do that in a minute. First thing is we want to just lube up real good and get that uh, solvent working in these lugs and chamber. Okay, uh, as I stated, we're going to do this um, the way that it's supposed to be done. And Colt recommends that um, obviously you use the chamber brush and we just get it down there into the lugs and the chamber. And Colt recommends that you come in and out five times and I've got solvent on this brush there's three four might have been six but five or six okay and then once you're in there they say three full rotations within the chamber then you can pull your brush out and we'll just let that solvent and all that uh, sit there for now all right now I've just got a uh, cleaning rod with a patch on the end I've soaked it in solvent and we're just going to go through the chamber or and through the barrel and straight down and come out. Uh, what you don't want to do, I have a really cool tool I'll show you in a second, but you don't want to pull these patches back through um, ever. Just once you get it through, take the patch off, then pull the rod back. The reason being is all you're going to do is when you're cleaning a really dirty rifle is you're going to pull all that junk from the barrel. If you pull it back through with a cloth on it or a patch, you're going to pull all that gunk and stuff back into the very sensitive lug and chamber area which needs to be really clean so why pull all that junk back in there so each time you put the rod through um, go ahead and put the patch through and once you get it through um, and or a brush which we'll do in a minute once you get the brushes then you unscrew the brush and each time you take the uh, you take the brush off and uh, you don't pull it back through Okay, then you would pull this back through. Again, reinstall a new patch or whatever you're doing. We're going to do all that in a minute, but don't be pulling stuff back into your chamber. Okay? We're now letting the solvent sit in the chamber and the barrel. We're just going to let it work its magic for a little bit while we deal with this stuff. Nothing you need to do with the charging handle right now, just set it aside. What we want to focus on is the bolt carrier assembly and that's exactly what this is okay this up here this little tube gas tube and this this is the gas key okay what you'll see on a lot of other manufacturers Colt does this really good uh, I don't know how well you can see it but they uh, they stake and they stake their uh, bolts here um, and you'll see a lot of other manufacturers do not do a very good job of that these end up coming loose and you get gas leaks but you shouldn't have one. You should check it, make sure it's tight, but I've had a Colt uh, AR-15 for almost 20 years and never had to deal with those um, as far as tightening them because Colt does a really good job at staking them. Okay, so next is obviously this is your bolt. Okay, first thing we want to do is get this uh, 
This is your firing pin in here, inside here, um, and it, you can kind of hear it go back and forth. Okay, what we want to do is there's a firing pin retainer right here, uh, retaining pin. So, and usually I can just get in there with my fingernail, or you can get a little screwdriver, but it's not a problem for me getting in there with my fingernail. And I've pulled the firing pin retainer right there, okay? Firing pin retainer is out. All we do is lift this up and let the firing pin, which is this right here, come out. So we'll set that aside in our parts pile here, along with the retainer there. Next thing we do is you can see on this bolt, this is your bolt here that can work back and forth, okay? Um, just push it back a little bit and you'll see this square right here. We've basically, the gas key is blocking it from coming out. So if we try to pull it out, it gets hung up by the gas key. So we've got to turn that 90 degrees. And once you turn it 90 degrees, you can just get your fingernail under it or you can get your firing pin under there a little bit and just pull on it and that, uh, that comes out. This is your cam pin. And again, it goes right in there. That's your cam pin. We'll set that aside, set that aside. Now, once you got that, your bolt will come out. This is your bolt assembly. Bolt carrier assembly, bolt assembly. All right, so we've got those parts there. Okay, as far as we, as far as the bolt carrier assembly, it doesn't need to be broke down any more than that. That's good right there, we'll clean it from here. So we'll set this aside with our parts. The other thing we wanna do here, and this is our bolt assembly, is we've got our um, extractor in there, okay? And there's a little pin in there. It is your extractor retaining pin, okay? And you can just use your firing pin and you can push in on that, okay? And once you do that, you can just get your, uh, it comes out a little bit, you can just get your fingernails around it, your fingers, push it out a little more, and uh, just push in a little bit. There's a spring behind here, your extractor, if you push in a little bit and get your fingers in there, it'll make it a lot easier to come out. So it just came out, that's the little pin, that's your extractor retaining pin. I'm going to set that aside, then we can take off the extractor from the bolt assembly. We inspect it, there should be a spring here, make sure that spring looks good. The main thing you want to do is check this extractor and uh, I'll see if I can get a close up of this. So this is your extractor right here and uh, hopefully you can see this real good but right in here, right in these grooves. That's where you get some buildup and it'll fail to extract. So make sure you have some tools like some dental tools. Um, I'll show you. And kind of if it looks gummed up in there, you need to scrape that out a little bit. Okay, I just got a little um, patch and I'm going to do this on all the bolt carrier assembly and the bolt assembly and the parts. It's just a rag with some solvent and I'm just going to put solvent on this part. Hopefully I'm in camera view there, but I'll just put some solvent on this part. Okay, let that start working. And what I'm talking about right here, dental tools, there's different kinds of picks and stuff. I just kind of get up in there, just a little scrape here, and some came off there, and just keep that extractor real clean. Okay, these tools are real great. I've got different angles and stuff, so just keep that extractor clean, okay? Then we'll take the bolt and uh, the bolt assembly and obviously same thing we're just going to rub the uh, solvent all over it with the rag. Make sure you get up here where your firing pin comes through and really get these lugs good. Okay. So we're just continuing to clean with a uh, patch with solvent all over it. Okay. All right, and uh, 
like I say, get the lugs real good. Those are critical. If you need to use a tool like this, kind of like I was showing you, if it's getting gummed up in there, but mine's looking pretty good, but you can get up in there and, and get that carbon out of there. So I'm going to get a new patch. Get some solvent on it. That one's getting pretty dirty. Okay. And uh, all right. On this bolt here, bolt assembly, this is a uh, something that people um, don't really know, and uh, for years I didn't know either. But um, I'll try to get a close up of this so you can see what I'm talking about. Okay, hopefully you can see this. A lot of people, you get a big carbon buildup here, um, and that's where you know explosions occur and stuff. Um, people for years think you have to. They make special tools and keys and all kinds of things you can scrape this carbon really gets built up on here um, contrary to popular belief if you want to clean that go ahead um, once in a while it's fine if that's what you like if you like the way your weapon looks um, but really that serves no purpose because what this carbon does this carbon buildup is actually help make a seal um, for those gases so that is purely for looks and you can use steel wool or buy a fancy key if you just have to have that clean all the time. Um, but that is, uh, like I say, it actually helps make a gas seal, so that is not necessary. What I do is just run the rag around it a little bit and just make sure it's kind of smooth, that it's not real, you know, crazy. And uh, I do clean it once in a while, just, uh, but it really, like I say, uh, doesn't need to be. So I just use solvent. And that is all I'm going to, I'm just going to use the solvent. That's all I'm going to do with that. So, done there. We'll, of course, dry all these parts off in a bit. All right, next is uh, the firing pin. Again, just a patch with uh, solvent on it. Here's where you really want to make sure. Um, I'll show you here after I get some solvent on this. I say this rifle's had about 1,200 rounds through it, and then it sat for four days for everything to get on there all right then you can just take your little tool right up here is where you'll get carbon build up and uh, string off my finger um, if you can see that right up in here and this is where you can use your scraping tools a little bit and uh, just kind of scrape get that scrape that carbon off there that's definitely an area you want to make sure because that pin needs to seat All right, so once you get that and you're comfortable with that, we will uh, set that aside. Oh, okay, of course your cam pin, just uh, get it all lubed up with solvent. Just clean the uh, extractor retaining pin a little bit there. Firing pin retainer, just a little bit, no big deal. Okay, and then uh, now, once we've got all those parts, We'll just move to the bolt carrier assembly and clean this. Okay, I just want to say one thing, just inspect your firing pin. You can just put your, you can visually inspect it, make sure it looks good, and then just twist it in your fingers, the end of it, and you'll feel if there's any uh, imperfections or anything like that. So this one feels good and it's all clean. Okay, we've got the bolt carrier assembly. All I've done is dipped a uh, patch and some solvent and I wrapped it around a, a 45 caliber brush it's just a, a lot of guys do it just makes it easy to get something up in here and uh, I'm just rubbing the solvent around I'm just using that as a way to work it in and out and that's where the bolt goes obviously so I'm just gonna work it around good with the brush all right and then uh, I'll take a clean patch. I'll look down in there. Looks pretty good. I'm just going to let that soak in there a little bit. And uh, we'll just take the patch and we'll get the outside of the bolt carrier. Get up in these channels a little bit. Not much to it here. Get the gas key. We'll talk about that in a second. 
the outside of the gas key. Do not go inside the gas key, please. It's not necessary. All right. And uh, obviously, if you have brushes, uh, use those up in here. Get some solvent on there. Break away all the carbon. And uh, then the other side. Um, not a huge deal, but uh, it does have some junk up in there. So again, just uh, get your rag. Get some solvent on it. And we'll run it kind of up in here. And around here. Just get any build up. Real simple. And then uh, get this rag off here, or this patch, and I'll just go down in there maybe a little bit where the firing pin goes, just to get that a little bit down in there. You don't have to do it a lot. A little solvent, there you go. Okay, so with that, okay, I will go in here um, and clean this up a little bit. Real simple. Just use some Q-tips, okay. This is what I don't want you to do. You don't need to stick Q-tips in this gas tube. Number one, it's, it, it, the gas has burned so hot. I had a, one of my AR-15s for 20 years and I've never stuck anything down the gas tubes and it's had, <laughs> I don't know how many, thousands and thousands and thousands of rounds. The gas has burned really hot. Um, it, it's just not necessary. And if you do get it plugged or you don't realize that it's plugged, it can uh, have catastrophic results with getting something stuck in that gas tube. So just stay out of the gas tube. Do not stick Q-tips in there. Just leave it alone. Just clean the outside of the gas tube. All right, enough said. Then we're going to go in here uh, where the bolt goes, and I'm just going to use a little Q-tip on. There's a ledge back in there when you guys look. Um, and I'm just going to clean that up a little bit. And uh, I'll just take a dry patch running around my 45 brush there and just get up in there with a nice clean patch all right get that out of there and uh, yeah it looks clean okay now set everything all those parts are clean um, last thing is just the charging handle and I just run some solvent on a patch get up in this channel here okay you're basically just getting the exterior of this clean with some solvent. Doesn't take much. Okay, there you go. That's clean. Now what we do, I want to spill that, is we just simply take all our parts and uh, I'll wipe them down. I'm not going to go through all this with you, but um, I'll wipe this down a little better get your bolt carrier assembly and you're basically just wiping all the solvent any excess solvent off of it getting up in these grooves and these channels you don't have to do a lot of detail like I said we pretty much cleaned it and we had the patches we ran the patch up in there you remember so get that clean your bolt assembly dry it all off again don't stick a Q-tip in this gas tube, just leave it alone. Okay, you can see there's still carbon build up there. Like I say, that helps make a seal. I really don't care. So, um, we'll just leave leave that on there. Um, and then just make sure you get in these lugs real good. Like I say, that's critical. Both the lugs on this bolt and in the chamber. In a minute, we'll deal with that. But get that. Clean up your cam pin. Dry it off. Extractor. Like I say, we put a tool up in there, inspected it, looks good. The extractor retaining pin, firing pin retainer, and then we'll dry the firing pin off. So I pretty much did that. Um, I'm going to get up in these lugs a little bit more, uh, just dry them off, dry this charging handle a little bit more, but I don't want to waste time on the video. So I'll just spend another minute here getting that done. Q-tips work good for just getting up in these lugs, getting them real clean getting all the gunk out of there good for getting up here on the bolt getting around the ledges a little bit doesn't have to be super crazy but you want this part to be pretty clean and uh, and q-tips good for getting down in uh, where the extractor goes 
now that we've loosened all that stuff up with the solvent. So, Q-tips are pretty handy. Alright guys, trying to get you a halfway decent angle um, up in the lugs there. First thing I do is just take some patches and remember we put a lot of solvent in there and you just kind of try to work your patches around in the lugs the best you can. We'll follow it up with some Q-tips but just run it around the best you can. Get some of that excess uh, solvent out of there. Some of the stuff we broke free. All right, and then here again, you can get a build up in there, and this is where you can actually use your tools, your picks. I can see a bunch of gunk up in there. It's fired a lot of rounds, and I can just get that off um, with those tools and then wipe them on a rag. And uh, like I say, we'll follow up with Q-tips in a minute, but I'm just kind of getting some of that stuff out of there. And you can come in your ejection port over here and get the bottom side. Just kind of have to work the different angles. All right, I'm going to run another patch in there, and then we'll uh, get to Q-tips. And uh, you actually can get your fingers up in here too and run a patch the best you can to get the uh, outside here get the dust cover all that stuff so hopefully that was a halfway decent angle but like I say I'm gonna continue to clean this a little bit be back in a sec okay I'm coming back and I'm just really working hard with the uh, q-tips up in here and uh, not sure if you can see it I may have to get another angle but um, your gas tube comes out right up here of course our lugs and chamber down there gas tube just leave this gas tube alone don't stick stuff in it again you can clean the outside of it but leave it alone as far as that goes we're just gonna I'm just gonna work these lugs get in there get different angles make sure all the goops out and uh, then I'll be back and I put a little more solvent on my q-tip uh, because it was really gummed up in there. I shot a lot of rounds, so just to break free a little bit more and I'm um, just working in the lugs. This is probably the most difficult area to clean, but it's got to take just a little patience with it. So that's what I'm doing now. Alright, I have the uh, lugs clean and the chamber really good. You just really want to make sure and get that area clean. Make sure those lugs are free. Now this is upper receiver. I just have a patch with some solvent on it. It's got a lot of junk up here you'll see in a sec. I'm just basically yeah, basically just running it up and down. Just be careful of that gas tube. You don't want to bend that. Just kind of get in and around that. Um, just the sides and uh, up in where the charging handle goes. Just rub it around in there and get all that uh, build up out of there. Pretty easy. You can see my patch is uh, coming out pretty dirty. So, yeah, it came out pretty black. So, it definitely needed to be clean. Now, all I'll do is uh, run a couple bigger patches here of these bigger patches. And I'm just going to go back down and dry all the solvent out of here and, uh, and uh, get any other debris that are in here. So, yeah, it's coming out pretty dirty. I'll just keep running a few patches till I am comfortable that I got everything out of there. So after I'm done with that, take another minute. I'll be back with you. All right, just finishing up and uh, this upper receiver. And uh, make sure you get the, uh, like I say, the ejection port door, dust cover. All right. As far as down here in the trigger assembly, um, you don't really need to do anything with that. Um, just leave it. I'm not going to mess with it. Um, if you want, once in a while I blow some just a little bit of compressed air down in there to get the dust out, but other than that, leave that alone um, unless it were having some sort of problem. But like I said, I never really cleaned down there and I had a rifle, a Colt for 20 years and Never had a problem if you want. If you don't have a compressor, you can just kind of run a dry rag down in here. 
a dry patch if you want and just get a little bit of the stuff that might be in there but all in all um, I wouldn't worry about it too much if you want you can get a if you're really anal you can get a couple q-tips down in there and just wipe around if you don't have compressed air and stuff and that is about all you do down in here so all right I'm done with that okay now we're just going to, all this solvent has had time to sit the whole time we were messing with the bolt carrier assembly and the bolt assembly and all that. Um, I'm just going to dip my brush in solvent, okay, because we put the patch in there earlier and it should have worked all that stuff. This is a really handy thing. Like I say, don't pull stuff back into the chamber. You're just causing a lot of work for yourself. Um, this is a really handy little thing. I can't even remember what it's called. Um, so anyways, it goes in here and it locks into your chamber and then into your barrel so that you can't pull stuff back in and what's nice about that is once you get it in there now it's a guide it guides my rod and uh, I'm just gonna go back and forth and I this is where I suggest you take the brush off and then pull it back through but I don't need to do that because this little uh, handy thing is protecting my chamber so I'm pulling if I'm pulling anything back I'm pulling it into this plastic guide tube instead of back into the chamber so it just speeds it up so you don't have to keep going down here taking the brush off putting it back on going back through if you like boar snakes I do use boar snakes sometimes um, when I just need a quick barrel cleaning but like I said this had about 1200 rounds and I want to get it real good so alright I've been through that barrel uh, obviously we'll uh, take the uh, barrel brush off there and uh, we'll get uh, wherever I put it. We'll run a couple of uh, patches through. And same thing with the patches. Run it through, take the patch off, don't pull it back through, but because I have my handy guide, um, because I have my handy guide, um, I don't need to do that. I can do it a lot quicker. So start running your patches through there and uh, just keep running them till uh, keep putting new ones on and uh, running them until they come out, you know, at least 95% clean, so that one's pretty dirty, so I'm going to put another one on and start running it, and uh, I'll come back after I get... Okay, this is my fourth patch, and uh, it's, it's looking pretty clean now, yeah, so we'll run it one more time, there, okay, that barrel's clean. If you're not going to shoot your AR for a long time, I shoot mine a lot so I don't worry about it, but if you're not going to shoot it for a long time or you live in a real wet climate or stuff like that, you can put a little uh, light coat of oil on that and then run it through your barrel so it keeps a light coat of oil in there um, just for protectant, but like I say, I shoot enough, I don't need to do that. So, um, alright, barrel's clean now. We'll pull this uh, little guide and uh, as you can see, if you didn't get a close up of that, it just protects it. and. You can get these at all kinds of, I just off the top of my head can't remember the name. If I, I'll, I'll figure it out and put it in the uh, notes, but um, anyways, yeah, let's get in. All right, next is our uh, buffer tube and uh, our buffer assembly, excuse me, buffer assembly and spring. Just push down a little pin there and then it releases this. So go ahead and pull this all the way out. Your, uh, I'm trying to do this with one hand so it's kind of difficult, but um, that's your buffer and then your action spring. So we'll get that all the way out of there. All right, it's free. Now we'll go to the workbench. All right, we've got the buffer here and uh, you can twist a little bit and get your buffer assembly out of there. Um, I don't use any oil, nothing on this. Some people will oil their buffer. I've never oiled it, and like I say, 20 years, never had a problem. I just clean it off a little bit. I don't oil the spring. You can put a light coat. They, they do say you can, but I don't worry about it. It's all I do, wipe it down, put your buffer assembly back in the action spring, make sure it's in there good, and uh, we'll just reinstall. You don't... All right, next thing I do is just take it off the block real quick, and. Uh, I just make sure I don't put anything on the rag. I just kind of run a rag up in the magazine well from the top. Just make sure you get any dust or a little bit of dirt and just run that up in there. 
And uh, that's all I do with the uh, magazine well, and then put her back on the block. Okay, we're ready to uh, reassemble the bolt carrier and uh, uh, bolt carrier assembly and the bolt assembly. So, first thing, this is huge, um, is lubrication, okay? Um, I've seen some crazy videos out there, and that's why I wanted to make one that was step by step. There's a lot of crazy videos out there, they skip stuff. There's one video, this guy, he's talking about AR-15s, they like to run wet, They and he's just jamming oil everywhere, absolutely unnecessary. Um, yeah, he was just spraying oil everywhere, and it's, it was just a mess. Um, they do need oil. Um, I'm going to show you what Colt recommends, okay? Um, it doesn't need a lot. The problem is you put a bunch of oil in all kinds of parts where it doesn't need it. All that's asking for is to have dust and dirt get in there and oil is great but it also attracts all that dust and dirt and then you're just gonna gum up your gun um, it's ridiculous you do not Colts do not AR-15s do not need that much oil so here is what we're gonna do we're going to take um, a patch and we're gonna put some good old uh, hops number nine on it and we're going to lightly coat some stuff. So, I'm just going to get some oil on both sides of it. And this is all you're going to need to lube this whole gun before reassembly here. Okay? So, we've got some oil on that. Soaked in good. All right, that's an oily patch. Great. All right, first thing is we take our bolt assembly, okay? And we want to get our extractor. Don't forget our extractor has a spring on it, make sure that spring there. Um, I have just a little bit of oil on my fingers, okay? So I, and that's fine. Um, and make sure your spring goes on the inside there, you'll see, and line the holes up. <clears throat> All right, once we get that in there, I got fat fingers, but um, push down a little bit to take some tension off that spring. And then we'll be able to get the uh, extractor pin, retaining pin back in, push it through. We're good there, okay? Now we'll take this, and they say, just take this rag and lightly coat the outside of the bolt carrier assembly. Okay, and you can just put a little bit of lube in the lugs here. And all we're using is a rag. We're not dripping oil, we're not spraying the cleaner protector and lubricants and all that junk that you'll see. We're not putting grease, um, okay? Now, a little bit of controversy. It's not controversy, I'll tell you what the facts are. Uh, the facts are these rings, everybody said for years um, that, uh, I don't know if you how well you can see that, but there's these different gas rings, so guys are in here um, trying to spread them out. There's three different ring holes in these rings, these gas rings, and guys say you got to have them staggered. Absolutely incorrect. It is wrong information, okay? The reason being is we're going to put this... Um, we're going to now, now that we've got it oiled up, we're actually going to put this bolt assembly back in the bolt carrier assembly, okay? Your ejector obviously goes to the right, okay? So we will just place it back in there. You got to turn it just a little bit to get it in there just right, okay? Now, this goes, this actuates in and out. Those gas rings at any time, if you staggered them, can be right back together now. Um, so it makes no sense to stagger them because they're not going to stay that way in here, okay? So just forget that old myth. Um, once you get that, push your bolt all the way back into the bolt carrier, and then we're looking for our cam pin. And I've got just a, enough oil on this rag, just put a little bit of oil on it. And then uh, remember we just insert the, uh, we can't insert it this way because the gas key's in the way. So we gotta insert it that way. And uh, once you insert it, then you can turn it um, 90 degrees. Okay, once you got it turned 90 degrees, um, you don't, I'm getting the lube off my fingers, you do not need to lube your firing pin, okay? So we've got that, the bolt's back, and uh, all we're going to do is take the uh, bolt, or excuse me, firing pin, put on the bolt carrier assembly, okay? Get it all the way down in there, and uh, push on it. Now we are going to take the firing pin retainer, and we're going to put it in, okay? Lock it in. Now our firing pin 
is locked in there, it won't come. And you can just pull this out or you can just give it a snap. And once you give it a snap, the bolt comes out, the cam pin rolls up there to the front position, pull out, make sure it's solid. That's reassembled. Okay. Now, Colt says, all you do is take the same rag with a little oil, get the outside of this uh, bolt carrier assembly, a light, light coat of oil, okay? Top of the gas key, they want you to oil that. Um, there, that is lubed. Now they say take the charging handle, and if you can, this charging handle catch, there's a pivot point there. You can just drop just maybe a little dot of oil in there. I'm gonna, that'll be enough and then work it a little bit. I have an ambidextrous and uh, uh, charging handle extension. That's not normally there. Uh, it usually just has this, but same thing, same idea, pivots. So get just a little bit of oil in there, wipe off the excess, and then I'm just gonna run this rag down the charging handle, and then I'm gonna run it on the underneath side. They say to do that. Just get that light coat of oil. There, folks, your AR-15 is appropriately lubed. You don't need to do anything else. That is how simple and how awesome this gun is. It, it doesn't, if you see those videos, they like to run wet and all this crap that it's incorrect. I, I've ran these things um, for a long, long time. And by doing it this way, you're not gonna get all that gum build up from the dust and, and even the carbon when you're shooting. Just, you know, if you shoot five rounds, well, go ahead, you know, but if you're gonna shoot a lot of rounds and you want this gun to function and you want it to function properly the way it was manufactured and the way they want you to do things then do it this way and uh, you'll be able to shoot 1500 rounds 2000 rounds and you won't even have a malfunction um, so all right now that we've got that done let's get it back into the upper receiver okay first thing you do is charging handle and like I say there's a notch up in there you can't just stick it in right there um, right up at the top you got to go in here just kind of where it's loose go in there and start kind of pushing up on it and find that notch and you can actually look up in here um, if, if you want but just push that in kind of up there and then you'll see how it just slipped in so I put a little upward pressure I get it started and then it slides up in there right where it slides up in there stop take your bolt carrier assembly put your bolt carrier assembly in of course your bolt is here it goes forward your ejection ejector and all that there's really only one way it can go in your gas key goes up into the bottom of this charging handle okay and just let it slide in and you'll feel it catch on the charging handle then just take the whole everything and just let it go and then push in lock it in okay that is reinstalled now okay now we can just uh, put the uh, upper receiver back it's on the pivot pin remember put it back there uh, connect it up with the uh, lower receiver and then remember this pin over here just push that in okay that gun is uh, back together and now I'm just gonna take this and uh, I'm just gonna hit the charging handle work some of that oil in with the bolt bolt carrier assembly and the bolt and all that and the lugs and just get it worked in okay now um, you can just take and all I do on the outside is clean up any dust a little bit of dirt I don't really put any oil I just keep the outside dry like I say some guys you, if you want to oil the outside go ahead but you're just gonna collect dust and dirt and grime and turn everything into turn your gun into a, a, a dirty weapon um, just because you wanted to put lube all over the outside so not necessary I just wipe it up and uh, that's all I do good enough for me that is a clean Colt AR-15 right, last thing I do is just once in a while I just do a one little drop of oil on the forward assist and uh, you can just kind of pull this back and work that forward assist pull your charging handle back you'll feel it just work that work the oil in a little bit not much all right and uh, you know you can lube any swivels you have if you have uh, slings for them and whatnot but that's uh, that's it on lubrication so just one real quick thing if you are uh, out firing a lot and uh, you're out for a week like I was day after day and you're just shooting and you're not cleaning your gun 
Um, these will shoot a long time. There are, and, and you need just a little, things are getting just a little bit hard, your charging handle, things like that, your bolt. Um, there are two little holes here, two little vents. So like, you know, fourth, fifth day, whatever, um, and you want to get just a little lube in there without disassembling the gun, you can drop a drop. I mean a very small amount. These guns do not need a lot of oil. Um, but just in the field, if you have to real quick, you can, in each of those holes, drop one little drop of oil and then work your charging handle and your bolt back and forward. And uh, it, if something was binding a little bit, it'll, it'll free it right up. But don't stick cleaner, protect the lubricant thing, you know, uh, plastic stick down there and just spray it and have it bubble out and all that crap. No, just one little drop in each hole, work it, and uh, you'll be fine. That's just a... Uh, something if you're in the field and you don't want to strip it, don't have time, you need just a little extra lubrication. All right. Last is I want to show you how to clean a magazine, a 30 round and disassemble it. You don't need to do this very often, if at all. I do do it rarely um, just to get the dust out of it. You can use an air compressor to blow it out or just run a dry rag through it. But anyways, turn it upside down. Um, you can use a 223 round you can pry up on that a little bit um, you want to pry this up a little bit or you can just use a screwdriver you just got to pry it up just a little bit so it uh, gets over a catch there and then you can take your screwdriver and in the back here there's just a little gap and uh, you can get it in there and then just kind of twist it and you'll see this plate start to move and actually if it doesn't I need to pry up just a little bit more there get it in there and then you can just pull forward with the screwdriver and uh, this comes out be careful the spring they, they usually catch here on these tabs so they don't go flying but if, if I wasn't real careful that could have went flying but anyways then you just got to work your spring out of there okay very simple like so okay um, there's that's the uh, contents of what's in there all right your guide up here and then of course your spring so this is a little dirty, a little dusty. All I'm going to do, I'm not going to use any oils. Um, if you wanted to use a little solvent, I suppose you could, but I'm not going to use any of that. I'm just going to wipe it down a little bit, like so. Get the dust and dirt off of it. And then uh, you can take your magazine, and I'll just uh, stick a rag in here. And you can get a, a longer rod here, like so, to get this rag up towards the top. And, uh, yep, I'm just going to do that. Got a little bit out of there. Just be careful. Don't be prying and getting crazy. But just stick your rag down in there. Like so. And uh, there. And like I say, if you want to do a little compressed air, you can do a little compressed air. But I'm not even going to do that. I'm comfortable. Take your mag. Put the magazine back together. Of course, the guide here. There's a little trick. Just, uh put the front of it in first. You can't just put it in because of the tabs. It'll be difficult so you kind of got to just put it in at an angle and work it in there like that. And then just work your spring around the tabs. And uh, you can catch this spring, like I say, right on one of the tabs there so it doesn't pop out. Magazine's right. Um, everything's lined up right. So all we got to do now is reverse what we did. Oops. Excuse me. We Go just from the front and get that spring down in there, compress it a little bit, and then we'll slide that, we'll slide this uh, plate right back in. And uh, there we go. And then I just take and uh, you can bend down a little bit on this. I just kind of hit it on the workbench, bends that kind of back down into place, and uh, there you go. Uh, just wipe down the outside. You've got a clean magazine, so that's all there is to it. All right, last things last, and that is we need to function test this weapon. Um, not actually going out and firing it, but just function testing it right here. Of course, it's safe, um, and uh, nothing's loaded. Obviously, I haven't had any ammo around. I just put it back together. Uh, make sure you do this very safe. Um, point it in a proper direction, or if you have a clarion barrel. Um, but first thing we want to do is, I'll turn it around and go lefty here, is uh, put the weapon on safe, okay? 
and then we're going to go ahead and pull the trigger and we're testing the safety that the safety works then we're going to put the weapon on fire okay it's on fire now and we're going to go ahead and pull the trigger and we're going to hold the trigger after we uh, we're actually going to hold the trigger down and not let up on it when we do that we should hear a very distinct metallic um, actually we won't we'll just the, the hammer should go forward um, so it's on fire and we're going to point it in a safe direction we're going to hold the trigger back okay we're holding the trigger back we're going to go ahead and grab the charging handle bring everything to the rear of the bolt and everything and then let it go we're still holding the trigger now what you're going to hear is I'm going to slowly release this trigger and you should hear a very distinct metallic clunk okay I'm going to go ahead and do it I don't know if you'll be able to hear it but I'm going to go ahead and release it okay that's what you should hear and then you can let the trigger the rest of the way okay right there and what that is is the disconnector releasing the hammer to fall slightly forward to engage the sear that is a function test we know that uh, that for the most part is the best we can right here that this fun uh, weapon is operating properly and uh, when we go out in the field and actually load it up that is the uh, obviously final test but uh, um, yeah that is the way you function test an AR-15 okay and I'm putting it back on safe now so all right that uh, pretty much wraps it up I hope you appreciate it like I said there was a lot of videos out there I'm gonna go ahead and pull that back and lock that open um, but there's a lot of videos out there, and uh, I wasn't really happy with those videos. Um, uh, looking around, a lot of people skip step. Hopefully, I went step by step. Like I said, I did it from the book. Um, that is the way we do it. Um, I gave you how uh, a lot of suggestions on how Colt wants it done. It, you know, it's it's don't have to make it rocket science. So hopefully, you can refer back to that video in the future. Uh, if you haven't, please check out lawabidingbiker.com for all your law-abiding biker needs. As you can see, we're very, very diverse in what we do. Uh, motorcycles all the way to guns, um, everything law-abiding biker. Um, check out the podcast, the blogs, and videos. I've got a lot of other tutorial and review videos out there. And we're going to keep pumping content out to you guys. If you feel so inclined, um, we're not making any money off this. All this stuff is free right now. Um, everything we do, and it takes a lot of time. So. Um, there have been some donations and we appreciate that very much. If you feel so inclined, please go to lawabidingbiker.com. There's a donate button, PayPal donate button. Anything helps us. Um, the more comments, the more feedback, the more donations we get, um, the more content um, we're going to put out for you guys. So please check the site out and uh, thanks a lot. All right, we'll catch you on the next one. Peace out.